Hi everyone, today I want to have a little play with the jelly um, printing plate and I want to show you a couple, well I will be doing a couple of different techniques um, in the coming weeks but today I want to show you one technique which involves these leaves um, and so it's quite simple, you know, you don't need to go and buy any stencils, but I'm using these leaves as stencils. And next time you're going for a walk, you can just pick a few and that is all you're going to need. So um, I'm going to get my Rangers craft sheet out and put it on my desk and then we can start the process. All right, so what you will need for this um, project is a jelly plate now these sell in different sizes there are really big ones um then there is like a smaller one there is also one that's a portrait size and i have a square six by six inches and um you will also need a brayer to go with it so this was a small brayer i will see how i get on with it um I might need to get another one because I've seen this technique where um, you need two brayers uh, to work faster. So I might get um, a slightly larger one next time. So this is the small um, two and a quarter inch brayer by Ranger. Um, and the good thing is it's got a built-in footed stand. So you can see this roller stands up on your desk so you won't get um, your desk dirty or whatever your your workspace dirty um, you also will need a variety of um, acrylic paints so i've got two types i've got the dilution one um, in three different colors which i specifically ordered for this type of a project so these are lovely colors so this is the pomegranate seed uh, funky fuchsia and pure sunshine so these are beautiful colors and they go so well together gorgeous so i'll see how um, i get on with those uh, from my understanding these are a little bit more liquid um, compared to the dina Beckley heavy body acrylic paint these are thicker um so whenever it says heavy body acrylic, that's what it means. It just means it's thicker to work with. So um, I'm new to this, but I have been watching and researching this type of art. So here is the jelly plate. Now it is advised to keep the packaging because you want to store your um, jelly plate in there you don't want to this is the type of packaging that you don't want to throw out it's actually going to be um, where it stays so it comes stuck onto two sheets of uh, like acetate type of thing so just peel them off like so I'm not entirely sure whether you need to keep those or not, but I would keep them regardless. Um, I would keep them for using with the um, splatter technique, you know, when you... Or the packaging technique, rather. So, okay, so I'm going to remove my paper and I'm going to peel off. It feels really funny. It feels like silicone. So... It's soft um, and kind of, yeah, just really silicone-y. So put the plate on your working surface and you're going to work on this side. So that's your working area. Um, I also went and <laughs> nicked my son's uh, Ikea paper because I realized I don't have any kind of thin paper and this is better than printing paper like just a regular printer's paper because it's a little bit thicker and it's got just a very slight um, texture to it so it's not um, how shall I say it's not fully actually I think I'm going to use a piece of paper for the backing just because I want to see the color better. I think that works much better here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to centralize it like so. And um, so I picked a variety of different leaves. So I picked 
couple of them I picked a few days ago and then a couple of them I picked yesterday. So the ones that I picked yesterday, they're still quite firm and they have uh, structure to them. Whereas the ones from a couple of days ago, they have wilted a little bit and so they're softer. And I wonder uh, whether they would be easier to print or not. Also, I have this um, like ivy type of a leaf and if you look at them, they have this little thing which I will pinch off so that they're completely flat or you can cut them off. These don't pinch off anymore because they're not that fresh. So I'm just going to cut it off and make sure it's completely flat. So I'm going to start by... Um, actually, I need some... I'm going to prepare the leaves first of all. So I picked these ivy leaves in different sizes. So I've got four different sizes. Also make sure the leaves are not covered in any dust because if you pick them by the road, that's likely to be the case. So I've done that already. Either wash them in a little bit of water and um, dab the water off so that they're completely dry or just use um, just wipe them off with your hands or something. So basically here are four different leaves. Before I do the leaves, I'm going to start off uh, by putting some of the acrylics on top of this plate. So let me get the brayer out. <clears throat> okay, I think I will. Um, so the only downside to these paints is that you need some sort of little pastel um, palette knife, sorry, because you can't just uh, squeeze them out. So I'm going to, I assume you only need, that's probably already too much. So I'll start with a little amount using the um, what was this one? Pure Sunshine. Have loads of tissues next to you so you can uh, wipe the paint off. And then I'm going to turn the brayer to the other side so these lovely things are sticking out. And then I'm going to go ahead and it kind of feels like there is too much paint here. So the uh, brayer or the acrylic needs to sit nicely on the plate. If you feel like it's just sliding, then it means there is too much. But I'm going to first of all just go ahead. You'll you'll get the gist of it once you start using it. The more you experiment, the better you'll get at it. So I think at this point, if I want to take some off, I would just um, have like a piece of paper near me that I'm going to place onto this other side. Actually, let me just move this plate a little bit like so and then here I'm going to use this to clean off my uh, brayer and you see how quickly that is I don't need to use any wipes or anything like that just roll it down and that's it if I want to pick up a little bit more of this paint I'm just going to go with a dry brayer over the top like that trying to have a really smooth surface and then again clean it off onto the paper and that is it now I'm ready to place my leaves and I think I will place them with the veins down because basically um, this will be the printed image so I'm just going to when you're placing them try not to move the um, object, whichever stencil you're using, whether you're using leaves or something else, try to not, um, I think I'm going to use, put this one that way, to not kind of slide it around because then the image won't be as perfect. Now, on top of that, I am going to place a piece of paper and I'm going to try and print. So you do need a lot of space for this type of uh, project. 
which I don't have. So I'm going to put this on top like that and just give it a good rub. And so you should end up with a negative print, which means that you're going to have paint around these leaves. So sometimes I've seen also people use their brayer if it's clean. They just would go on top and make sure they apply good pressure to pick up all that paint from underneath like that. And now I can I can lift it. And look how beautiful this is. It looks very crisp. The edges look really well done. So I'm going to put it to the side. And what I'm going to do now is use another color all right, so basically get ready for using a lot of paper. So jelly plate printing will not be about just printing one image and that's it. There's no point getting it out then. It is so addictive and it's so much fun that you will see <laughs> that Quite literally, there is, you can just keep on going and going and going, building and building and building. And the more you do that, the more interesting it becomes. So the very first print I did there was just quite literally getting started. And um, I have used this um, fuchsia, funky fuchsia, color by Dilutions. And typically it's a little bit bright for my liking on its own but I'm trying to get it to work here um, by serving a contrasting point to that beautiful mango yellow color which I think is called pure sunshine also by dilutions so what I'm doing here is building and building and having also some tea by the looks of it yep so I have applied um, that color on top so lifted the leaves and you can see the little bit of veining of that pure sunshine yellow coming through and then on top of that I applied the pink so you can see here the yellow color being lifted because that was um, on the bottom and so you lift first whatever you apply last that will be on the paper and then whatever is underneath will be at the bottom. So I lifted that and you can see a little bit of that pink still remaining and at this point I decided to start adding uh, the white and I think this is the Dina Veckley white um, heavy body acrylic that I'm using just to make that the, the, those bright colors that I picked just to make them a little bit more pastel and pale that's what you can do always have a big tub of white paint acrylic paint and you can create so many different tones uh, of any color so again I'm using a different set of leaves and taking the first print and you can see it looks quite basic at that point and then I have these sparse kind of bold areas um, around the leaves you can see you, you can see the clear plate and then there are some areas that the paint is still stuck onto and that's what uh, will make your print more interesting when that happens so I don't uh, quite know yet how to do it in a more controlled way. So for example, if that's the look I want, how to create it. It just happens uh, through practice, I guess. And over the top, I went with that darker color and again, lifting it. And then basically um, picking up that leaf and then turning it around and then placing it next to it. So kind of like mirroring um, the um, look or the, the object, in that case the, the leaves, and then pulling it off and that's what I got there. So that looks quite nice and you can see here they're overlapping 
underneath what was there and you can just continuously play around and there actually I decided to take that leaf and the dark that pomegranate seed color that I had I decided to put it down face down onto the paper and print off the veining of the leaves um, by pressing them down and that looked quite nice as well so here I decided to dry just a little bit um, so caution do not use too much of uh, heat near your uh, jelly plate because it's not designed for that but if you just use a little bit of a um, heat uh, tool or a hair dryer just from a big distance it will help to dry up the paint a little bit and sometimes that helps it to stick better I found um, but again you need to give it a go and play around and see what works best for you a more wet paint or a drier one what pulls better uh, or even what effect you might like better so at this point you could see I started really enjoying uh, using that white acrylic paint here I decided to finally open up the top this huge top of paint I got um, ages ago by Pebio. This is a iridescent watercolor, uh, sorry, acrylic. I will try to leave all the links below. So it's like a fuchsia pink uh, iridescent with, with like a blue sheen to it almost. And um, I decided to give it a go and see how it's going to look like on, on this um, pool. And it does look really nice. The pool of the paint that I did there um, has this very kind of pastel, very subtle look to it. And if you tilt the paper to the side, you will see a little bit of shimmer, um, kind of sheen and iridescence. If you don't like too much of that sort of um, metallic -y or shimmery, sh shiny kind of uh, look, that is definitely not going to do it. So don't be put off by it but a little bit of it definitely adds something to the printing um, again I am uh, using that same uh, leaf there and trying something different so I'm trying to put a darker color at the bottom and then going over it um, with white which then obviously mixing together creates a bit of a pinky color. And then uh, I wanted to see what happens if I pull it like that. So obviously the um, the color that pulls onto the paper has layers. And sometimes it takes a while to figure out which one is it that you're going for, which one is it that you like, and how to to get there basically it's not very straightforward you have to kind of train your mind to understand that you will have these layers of colors and whatever color you put last is what you're going to have on your paper and whatever is underneath will be thereafter if that makes sense so here I'm deciding to do um, another print as you could see just lifting that uh, bit of the already quite wilted <laughs> leaves and uh, just printing it straight onto the paper seeing how much I can pull off uh, of the paint and I am I am really enjoying these subtle versions um, more than the first very bright ones um, I kind of find them very soothing and this entire process is incredibly therapeutic. You could go through so much paper um, and not even notice it. So get armed <laughs> with with a pile of paper before you start this project because I'm warning you, you will love it. It's really, really addictive. Um, I think the entire process took me 55 minutes um, to film. And I think at one point I even had to switch my camera off because either the, all of my memory cards got full or 
um, the battery died, something like that, but it, it must have been just over an hour and I'm telling you, it just flew by. It completely flew by and then once it stopped, you have to actually tell yourself, okay, it's time to stop now and I think I had to go and pick up my son from the nursery, so I had no other choice, but um, when I then stopped and I looked around, it was like a pile of paper um, prints sitting everywhere and some of them are quite beautiful, so yeah. Um, hence why I decided to do this speed up per, um, version for you because otherwise uh, it would have been way too long um, for me to edit and even put it into two parts would have been too long. So here I then decided right at the end to try something different and use two leaves, put them together and create something a little bit more whimsical perhaps. Um, so something that you know didn't come like that growing on a tree um, and I really ended up loving this last one here. Before I go I just added some of the white on what I had and I thought I'll show you how to do something about a color that is too bright and I didn't like much so I'm just going to see which would be the right placement here and try and print on top of that and show you what happens. So you then get basically something like this, which is has you know taken off that brightness, but it left some of the colors, which looks really pretty. And that way you can just continuously keep on going and creating. Let me just quickly show you all of the prints that I've done today. So this one was the iridescent one. Then there was this one here, which is beautiful. Then we have that one with a bit of iridescence as well. We have a couple of the very subtle ones, which I really like. There's this one here and there is this one that one there is this one which i might do something about because this color is a little bit too dark on its own so i might do something about it and then there is even this one which was just a clean off but i quite like it as an abstract piece to work with and doodle on top and then finally the last one i just did is this one so thanks for watching and see you soon.